Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to this channel. My name is Stacy and this is Stacy Makes where I film and post cozy crochet content. And what does that mean? Well, I talk about new patterns I've tried. I talk about new yarn I've tried. Um, we'll talk about market prepping and preparing for a market. I'll do market vlogs, um, things like that. So, um, you know, so if you like that kind of thing, you know, welcome, welcome to this place. So last week, you guys, if you watched it, you enjoyed a new video. Well, what do you want to call it? A new format. That's the word. A new format with the vlog. So, okay. So last week you enjoyed, or hopefully enjoyed, a, um, a new video format for me, which was a, a vlog, a week in my life. Um, I, I'm a pretty boring person. Um, I go to work full time. I have several children at home. Um, and I crochet in my free time. So that's about as exciting as my week gets most of the time. So, But anyway, I hopefully, I don't know if you enjoyed that or you didn't, but I'm back this week with my normal, what I made. Um, I talk about a few new patterns that I have and a little bit of my um, market prepping. So we have our next market and probably the biggest one we've ever done uh, next weekend. So we have now six days until we are in Owensboro, Kentucky for the Strawberry Festival. I know that there's five to seven other crochet vendors that have things like what we do. Um, and I say we because my daughter Tara from Old Soul Factory um, goes with me. She makes stuff. We do markets together. So um, we are excited. There's a ton of vendors. Um, hopefully the weather's nice. It's outside. Um, those kinds of things. If you have been following me all along, you know that in, was it March or end of February, we did an out, our first outdoor market and it was a disaster. It was so, so windy. I should have just stayed home. Um, our sidewalls tore. We had stuff blowing down. It started to rain. Um, we ended up leaving early and I still have a lot of, um, trauma for response to this next outdoor market from that one. And I was feeling very stressed and very anxious the last few weeks. We're going to be real here and talk about the fact that I haven't done a full year of crochet markets yet. I think July will be uh, a year since I've been doing crochet markets. I've done markets my whole life pretty much, but with other types of things. Um, but I never did outdoor markets. So this was new for me trying to work through not being able to control the weather. Um, the, you know, the wind was the whole thing. Um, and then I'm going to a lot of markets that I've never been to before. And so just the audience that's going to be there, the, the weather I can't predict, all of that gives me a lot of anxiousness about, um, you know, the stuff that I can't control. I, I like to be able to control things. I like things to be predictable, which I mean, I know it's not always possible, but when I go to a market that I've been to a billion times, I don't get that. I don't get anxious about it at all. I know exactly where I'm going, what door I'm going in, how long it's going to take me to set up sometimes even the spot that I'm going to have those kinds of things. So it's just new. So signing up for this two day market, first two day market and it being outside was all, it's all new. So I was feeling very anxious um, and that was kind of killing a little bit of my excitement for the market, which was then killing a lot of my um, motivation and desire to keep making things the last couple weeks. So um, let me talk about a few of the things that I did for that. So I was feeling very anxious about the fact that we were going to set up on Saturday and it started at nine. We needed to be set up by 8.30. It takes me an hour and a half to get there. So when you start backing up time, I'm going to have to leave my house at 5 a.m. Um, I don't have a hard time getting up, but if I have to leave at 5 a.m. for something that I'm very anxious about, I'm probably not going to sleep. And I was so I was starting to get very overwhelmed about this idea of getting up, at, you know, 4.15 ish to get ready and everything. Um, and then leaving my house at five and driving so far to a place I've never been before and doing all of my setup on Saturday morning. So I talked to Tara and we decided to go ahead and book the night before as well. So it's only an hour and a half and we were already booked to stay Saturday night. Um, but just the immediately when I pushed the button and I spent the money, um, which thankfully I, you know, I have the money, but, um, immediately when I pressed the button, spent the money, I felt the sense of 
just relief for that one one last thing checked off my list to worry about and that's helped a ton so we're going Friday night we'll leave Friday afternoon sometime we'll drive down casually we'll get to set up all of our weights our stakes our tent we just won't raise it we'll probably put our tables maybe under there and then we'll do all of our plushy setup on Saturday morning. We'll be able to go back to the hotel, go hopefully, you know, eat a nice meal, crochet some more if we feel like we need to, get a good night's sleep. We're gonna be 10 minutes from the venue and then we can show up at 7.30, you know, and we'll have an hour to just arrange everything or seven and, you know, we'll have time to arrange everything, get it all settled and just breathe before it starts. Um, and then Saturday night, we'll take down all of our plushies again. Uh, we'll leave up our tables and things and then we'll come back Sunday morning and we'll set the plushies and everything back up um I just don't want to leave them outside I don't think it's supposed to rain as of right now but the weather it's the midwest it's going to change so that helped a ton and I hated to add an extra expense and it seems so silly but I just I feel so much better about it already so um hopefully we don't forget anything um, so when we get there to set up also if we do find that Friday night we have forgotten something it also gives us time to then come up with a game plan either literally drive back home if we have to or find the thing that we need so and then the, the other thing that I did do um, to prep for this market and get a, a little bit more prepared was I went through all of my inventory um, last night I sorted it all out I bought these new bags I want to show them to you. So I have these, the great big bags. If you watch my stuff before, I have these really huge bags that we take to markets. But I bought these. These are 12 by 12 by 12 size. They're kind of like what you would get your, like a comforter or a sheet set in, a really big sheet set. And I thought I'm just going to, for the most part, focus on small stuff. Um, I'm a, there's a lot of crochet vendors. I'm not the last row of stuff. I've got a lot of unique pieces um, that are one-offs. I have a few medium pieces that I have a few of, uh, but aren't the same. And then I've got the small stuff. And I thought that's the stuff that I'm gonna be able to restock um, and then make again Friday night or Saturday night if we need to to restock, those kinds of things. So I bought those bags and I sorted out um, everything. Like this is my $10 bin so these are all of my ten dollar items that I have um this is my 15 which it needs some more stuff in there there's a geckos uh turtles sad hamsters my skunks are in here <laughs> um this is my 10 actually 10 and 12 10 and 12s are both no these are 12s these are all 12s sorry 12s which are tofus uh, bees, um, my capybara, I've got triceratops, a squid, uh, the bigger nooks, hooks, elephants are in here. And then I have a bin of all of five and eight together. So these are because five and eight stuff smaller. These are all my five and eights together. Um, and that just kind of helped sort and kind of get me a perspective on what I had for the small stuff. So then I took my empty bin this one and my goal was to fill it up uh, to the top with stuff in those price ranges um, I did not get all the way to the top I, I do have a reel I'll probably post later this week uh, I got it maybe two-thirds of the way full um, so a lot of the what you're gonna see today is the small things that I did make for um, that bin so I do have two new patterns three new patterns I have three new patterns this week that I did want to go over. I did stick a few new things in between um, stuff that the small stuff that I was making just because I I like to do new stuff. And so I'll go over that stuff now. I did a pattern test. So one of them was a pattern test that I got chosen for, which I don't apply for a pattern test anymore unless I feel like it's something that I could make for markets or that I will enjoy making. Um, and so I don't apply to a ton of them, but when I do, I really don't have any expectations of getting chosen. And then when I do, I'm like, oh, <laughs> surprise I kind of move on and then I'm like oh wow I'm getting a group um so this was the pattern test that I did this week which is flounder um the mermaid's best friends pack by Claire the crochet lady she's here on YouTube and on 
um, Etsy. She has the cutest little cupcake um, cuties, which are like little dolls that fold out of what looks like a cupcake. Sorry, I have a hair on me that's bugging me. Me and my crazy, weird, wavy hair today. Anyway, so this is Flounder, a uh, really well-written pattern. Um, I, sorry, I'm picking off fuzzies again. I hate that. Um, a really good size. It's actually way bigger than I thought it would be when I got done with it. So like you see him, he's in my, in my hands. Um, I put a price tag of 18 on him just because he, the color changes and um, his size. I don't know that Abella is selling for that, but he's probably maybe more of a 15 on the regular. Um, but anyway, so I really enjoyed this pattern test by Claire. The pattern was easy to read. I think she's just changing maybe a few little bitty things and she's already gotten it out. There's a seagull, uh, crab, and uh, the, the fish together. So really, really cute. I would recommend this pattern. It was fast. I did have to adjust um, my color um, changes to be centered with my eyes a little bit and I still got them off maybe one stitch. Um, but outside of that, I mean, it was really easy. These fins, you make them ahead of time and they're crocheted into the round. The tail is made onto the end. And so the only, you're surface crocheting this all later. And so there's no sewing really involved unless you count the surface crocheting and weaving in those ends. So really cute. I liked it. So, um, so that was the first new thing I did. I also bought this, um, you know, in my quest to try to find a dino I really, really liked. I brought this brontosaurus pattern from the savagely stitch shop you say that five times really fast savagely stitch shop on etsy um it is a i i have a big dinosaur like this from not too shabby but it just takes so long i think i charged 35 for those and it's quite a bit taller it takes a lot more yarn and i thought this was a lot more of a mini size um I will, I need to definitely make this again. I was interrupted a couple times. I made the legs actually at work on my lunch break one day. I had all four of the legs done. Um, and then you do a pretty common method where you then join the legs and you work up from there. You leave holes for these and then you work the head out and you work the tail out and then you work to close this bottom. Um, but no, super easy pattern to follow. I just was interrupted and it was the first time I was making it and there's, because the way it's creatively made, it's a no-sew pattern. It's kind of detailed in the way you got to leave the holes and go join back in and things on it. So, and then, you know, obviously try to stitch in the right stitches when you're doing all this close up and stuff. So I really enjoyed this pattern. This is Burnett Blankets um, Adobe. I think the new Marvel yarn is really, really soft. I'm going to put 24 on this guy. Um, he took me right about an hour, maybe in 10 minutes or so. Um, so I felt like that was a fair price for my time and, and the materials. I think I'll get faster at them, but we'll see if I get interest at 24. So that was the second new pattern that I tried this week. Um, and then I had this pattern for a long time, and this is uh, Twinkie the Tiny Turtle um, from Saucy Puffin Crafts, uh, Mallory. She's here on YouTube and Instagram and everywhere. Um, but I had bought this pattern, gosh, I don't know, months ago and hadn't made it yet. I had fallen in love with doing Fred's and I just didn't get back to this. But I'm like, I need to do something. I need to make another jumbo turtle. And I thought it'd be nice to make one that's a little different. And this one is a little, I think it's wider in a, in a way. It's not as uh, compact and round and up. It's definitely wider, has a, a little bit of a different shape um, than my normal Fred's, which I don't have any in here to show you. But... Um, anyway, I made it with jumbo yarn, which is why it's not so tiny and, uh, sweet snuggles regular. This is loops and threads, new multi, which is on clearance right now at Michael's. If you need some, and then I can't remember what color this is, but it's also the loops and threads, a super easy pattern to follow. Um, none of this was hard at all. Um, she does have you sewing the head on, but I didn't really find that challenging. I mean, sewing on a piece to me doesn't. Um, it's just one piece and you left a hole um, for it you left a place to put it so it wasn't like you had to guess really where it was gonna go and then sewing it on made it just not have to be tacked back and pulled back in any kind of way like I do with Fred's and then the back and the front flippers are different sizes which is kind of the way sea turtles are shaped and it has a cute little tail which you crochet all of these into the round so you make all of these parts 
and then this um, petal there's two different styles of petals I think the other one is even more fluffy um, than this one but I really enjoyed this pattern I will probably make it again I just can't do things in jumbo yarn very many days in a row I can't do them in days in a row just jumbo yarn and working it something about it just really makes my wrists hurt um, not hurt but ache a little bit more than normal um, and just not worth making a whole bunch of them all at one time so I just spread out my my time doing jumbo yarn but I've got Twinkie um, at 35 which I think is what I have my threads that are in jumbo yarn as well uh, I may have 32 on them actually but this has got the petals and stuff on it so I really enjoyed this pattern if you're looking for a good turtle pattern and you don't mind sewing a head on I would look into this one it's really really cute okay okay that one obviously didn't go in my normal bin I put the other two things in my bin when I was making stuff this week but okay um more big stuff that I made that didn't go in my bin this week um that's all the new patterns yes that's all the new patterns I have okay I did do another pattern test for a little bitty thing that I can't show you yet because it's not released but you'll see it on Instagram um, so this is the giraffe by um, Madeline Mako. I actually have every single one of her baby animal patterns, but I hadn't done the giraffe yet. Tara had done it, but I, this, I opened up my cabinet the other night and I saw this yarn and I'm like, it needs to be a giraffe. And I found, you know, the baby sand to match it and super, super cute. It's all no sew except for, you know, you sew the muzzle on and you sew on the, the acetones, these things are called, but um, I don't know how to say that, but but everything else is sewn into the round. Super cute. He maybe took a little bit, uh, probably actually about the same amount of time as the elephant, um, but the elephant has those great big ears and um, these have much smaller ears and these probably took the same amount of time together as the great big ears did. And then there's a couple extra rounds in here with his neck. So, and then you do have to do some color changes. I could have probably skipped the spots on his belly because he has the bottom spots and the yarn itself kind of has spots in it um, but I went ahead and did them just to have a little bit of an accent on it so super super cute I'm going to charge 24 for this giraffe from Madeline Mako and then I did another chompers this week this week was National Alligator Day it was on Wednesday I think it was the 29th and so I made another um, chompers um, great big blue holographic eyes so so cute um, I really I'd already made chompers in Burnett before and um, jumbo tweet snuggles yarn and I really enjoy this pattern it the bad part is, is this is old Burnett and oh, it gave my wrists a run for their money I'm so glad this skein is almost gone but I do have several more in my stash I probably just need to work through them or find a way to de-stash them because man they're rough okay so that's all of the big stuff I made that didn't that was new or didn't go in my bin outside of I'll show you these um, I did make two more granny squares on my lunch break and my plan is to um, I have one other one I made last week I think I showed you in my blog but my plan is to make a zipper pouch like with these I just haven't sewn them together so I'm really not counting them in my inventory yet but I did make them this week okay so let's talk about what I made and put into my bag um, I'm gonna move my bag up here so as I talk about this stuff I'll move my diet Mountain Dew too <sighs> anyway okay here's my bag it's got the brontosaurus and the fonder in it because I'm cutting them as smallish items um, I did make three things that'll get keychains on them. I just need to add the keychains. This is Stitching with Abby's Little Baby Turtle. The little mini jellyfish from Handmade by Hennick. And I made a little bitty uh, mini whale from all from Jade's pattern. It's tiny, tiny, tiny whale. Those three things will get keychains and they'll be $6 a piece. I did make this shark from... I don't can't remember how to pronounce the name. It'll be in the link in the bottom below. I just not I, I wish it had a little bit more shape to it, but it'll go my five dollar bin. Excuse me. 
same designer that made the shark made the stingray pattern. The stingray pattern is free on Instagram. I talked about it in my tin amigurumi um, Instagram plushie patterns to try that are free. This one's really nice and only takes like eight, nine minutes to make. And I can charge $5 for these. So I made two of these, these cute little tails. It'll be my $5 bin. I made two, I had all my scrap yarn out there. I made two little mini octos that'll go in my $5 bin. Um, I made two more Oto the octopuses. I like the great big eyes on this guy. I think he just makes it where you can see the little bobbles better and see his little face. Something about it makes him look a little bit more angry <laughs> or something. I don't know. I just like it. These are going to be $8 in my $8 bin. And then I got on a baby turtle kick and, um, made five of these i won't be able to probably hold them all here's three this is a free pattern on instagram by lmsart.co and celestial c or cofire.co sorry two more floral yarn i sell these for eight and i have five of those and then i made two of the little mini loaf cats um made little different faces on them but the little mini loaf cat pattern this one is from my universe 64 on instagram tails. This one's got a little color change on it. Scrap yarn pattern, uh, pattern. Scrap busters. That's what the, that's the words I'm looking for. Okay. And then I made, um, I just took, I had some scrap yarn out. I made a little snake. He's balled up right now. I've got him in a, in a knot. I made a little snake out of Burnett. Excuse me. The fuzzies I think is what gets to me when I'm in here, but he'll be 10. I made a chubby dino. If you watched my live this week, he was a struggle. The struggle is real. This yarn had never broke on me before and it broke on me twice, I think, while I was making this, making the live. And I started the, the mini turtles. I think I made two of them too while I was on live. Chubby dinos, I sell these for 10. They usually take me like 20 minutes to make. That one took me like 45. And I made a possum. Um, I sell these for 12 normally. I did shorten the nose a little bit, so he may go in my, he's shorter than my other possums. He may go in my $10 bin. And then I made another Nooks underscore Hooks Elephant, which is her free pattern. I really like this pattern, um, which I made a video on this one pattern. I think five yarns. I did it in five different sizes. This is Sweet Snuggles Light and 18 millimeter eyes. So cute. Okay, so here's how full my bin got. You can see it, it may even just be half full. It takes a lot of stuff to fill that thing up. When I bought that, I'm like, oh, 12 by 12 is not that big, but then like you put it in a cube and it's like, okay, that's a lot of space to fill. So that was my mission this week. I'll have to sort those back out into, I'll put some keychains on the keychain ones and then I'll sort them back into the, the bins, or the bags for the prices that they belong to. So, um, let's see if I forgot anything. I'll look at my list real quick. Nope. Okay. Well, this, I did do inventory at just a very, very, I did not write down every single item. I took my inventory from the last show, which I didn't sell a lot at. And then I took off the stuff that I sold already. And then I added the weeks that I have inventory, you know, because I keep them track of them on these books. So I added them all up. Anyway, I think I have around $2,500 in inventory um, total before this week. And then this week I made 294, which I was excited about that. I hadn't hit almost 300 for a long time. That doesn't count like the little um, grainy square um, things that I'll make into pouches. I don't know if I'll make them into pouches before the show and try to take them to this show or not, or if I'll I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I only have that one grainy pouch and then I'll have three of the little zipper ones. If I decide to take them, I'll only have four. So I haven't decided if I'm going to do that or not. So that's all I made this week, guys. Um, it brings my inventory total up to like 2,800. And so some other things I got to do this week to prep is when I was sorting inventory, I did go ahead and go through everything and I priced all the stuff. Uh, that needed price tags. I'm going to take my price tags in case I decide to price and set out some individual things that I normally put in bins, um, which I might do depending on how um, 
after day one, if the inventory gets pretty low, we might take a shelf down or take some of the bin items, the higher price bin items, and kind of spread them out if we need to, just so that they're more visible and make our space look full again. Um, so I've got to keep pricing stuff this week. I got some keychains to attach. I want to make a list of everything that I need to take that I can physically mark off the list. Like I'm taking my tripod, I'm taking my square reader, I'm taking, you know, I need my cash, I need our power banks and our weights and everything, everything. I need to make a list of everything and then this, this week as I randomly remember something, I have a list to write it down on and I'll have a list to refer to as I go over and over before I leave on Friday. I'm off work Friday. Um, which I got to run some errands in the morning for my husband and my kids, but um, that'll give me Friday to really pack up and um, make sure, go over that list to make sure I have everything in the car. So some of that stuff will take some time this week um, away from actually prepping anything, but we'll see what I accomplish next week's. Actually, this show is on Saturday and on Sunday, and I usually film Sunday mornings, edit, and post on Sundays. Um, so I'm going to possibly try to film a little bit of my week up through like Friday, kind of like a, kind of like a vlog, I guess. I think that's all I have for you guys this week. I know this is a shorter than normal video for me. Um, I just was busy prepping, didn't have time to do anything fun. Like, well, I did fun stuff because crocheting is fun for me. But um, I didn't have any time to do any like one pattern, five different yarns or any kind of let the color wheel choose my stuff or anything like that this week because I'm just in full on market prep mode for this. Now our next market after this one is three months. Well, we have small, like a very small local thing in July, the end of July, which I'm not really counting. And then our next one is in the beginning of September. We have three whole months between this one and the one in September outside of the really local one that we'll have in July if um, if we have that one so we'll have a lot of time but then it's like back it's like show a week off a show a retreat a week off a show a retreat a, you know and then it's like a show and then a week off a show it's very busy from September October <clears throat> through the first part of November and then we have like four or five weeks off I think it's four between our biggest show in November and then the one that we have at the beginning of December, we'll have some time off in there, but also have Thanksgiving. So the next three months will just be spent market prepping like crazy and trying to stay motivated, even though we don't have shows to sell the stuff at and trying to find places to put all the stuff that we make in between here and there. And then it's just summer, enjoying the summer with my kids, the swimming pool, the weather outside, you know, vacations going on, stuff like that. So, um, if you guys like this video, please just literally like this video. Subscribe to this channel if you want a notification on when I do post so that you don't miss something. If you have questions or comments, leave them down below. I try to get back to you guys um, when you do leave comments. I appreciate um, talking to you guys in between. I really love that, interacting with you guys and seeing what you have going on. Feel free to ask questions down there. Um, I try to answer everybody. Um, and I think that's all I have this week, guys. Um, try to stay motivated. Have a great week and happy crocheting!